We got him right now. I just got word we've oh. got uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis here. We're trying to get that sorted out. There and he there is. he is right now. Hello, <laughs> Governor DeSantis. Hi. How you doing down there? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Uh, I know you're out in Cedar Rapids, Iowa here, so let's talk about it. Uh, you've run an impressive ground game so far. I know you've done all 99 counties out in the Hawkeye State. Uh, you're polling second out there in the caucuses. How are you feeling? We're about five, five and a half weeks out. We're feeling really good. I mean, we, we had a great debate last night. I think we were able to show that uh, I was the conservative on that stage, yeah. and, and I'm the conservative uh, uh, leader that can bring change to Washington. And we're, we got great feedback, not only from that, but from our Gavin Newsom debate. So we're continuing to add people. You know, we have tens of thousands of people that have already committed to caucus for us, and we're adding more every day. Uh, we've been to all 99 counties, as you've mentioned. We have organization in all those counties. Uh, caucus is a little bit different than a primary. People go, two, three-hour ordeal. And uh, we've got a lot of people that are really committed to that process. And then, of course, we've been endorsed by the governor here, Kim Reynolds, who's very popular, and just got endorsed by um, even one of the top evangelical leaders in the country, uh, Bob Vanderplot. So we've got, we've got the momentum. We're going forward, and uh, we're just going to bring it all to fruition over the next five and a half weeks. And Governor, you have said that you're, you're sick of hearing about these polls, and, of course, people are constantly pointing out the numbers and where you fall in those polls. What would you like to say to people who are asking, why is Ron DeSantis still in? There's no way that he can take, uh, or take the lead over former President Trump. What is your response to them? Nobody has even voted yet. I mean, how ridiculous is it that we act like somebody has won before there's even voting? That's just not the way it works. We've got a massive primary season. There's a lot of delegates at stake. Uh, there's a lot of twists and turns with these things. But I would remind people, uh, 2022, November, uh, all the new, I don't know if your channel was, I know a lot were saying red wave, they were showing all these polls, that we're going to win all these places. And except for Florida and Iowa, Republicans got their tails kicked up and down this country. Uh, those polls were wrong. Uh, even my race as governor, polls were predicting a week out that I would win by four or five points. I won by 20 points. If you go back to the Iowa caucus in 2016, a lot of the polls had Donald Trump winning uh, by double digits. He lost to Ted Cruz by four or five points. So I just think we, have, and then Donald Trump himself for years would say that the polls are designed to, to do a narrative and not to trust the polls. Now all of a sudden, we're supposed to just fold in and not even allow people to vote uh, because people are, 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 are doing, doing these polls. So let's let people vote. Uh, I can tell you there's a lot of uh, people on the ground here that uh, are taking offense to the fact that people are saying they shouldn't have their voice heard. They should have their voice heard. Um, and I think you're going to continue to see uh, that sentiment. And I think that people on caucus night, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of people are going to be very surprised because they've been fed a narrative, uh, one thing. And it's almost like, why would media want to, to anoint one candidate? You know, I understand some of the conservative media that, that, that may, you know, like Trump. But why is the liberal media taking this narrative? And I think it's because they think that the Democrats uh, have a better chance to beat Trump. Uh, and as soon as the primary is wrapped up, if he's a nominee, I think you're going to start to see them rain holy hell on him. Uh, and, and they have a certain playbook that they want to do. And I think that that's what they're, they're trying to do. I think with me, uh, I think they realize that they've got a, a much different fight on their hands, not just for the election, but then when I get in, you know, we'll really clean house in Washington. You know, that's why last night, I mean, we had the tussle with Nikki Haley about BlackRock. She's supported by BlackRock in Florida. We've kneecapped ESG. We've done things like, like take away money from BlackRock at our pension fund because we're serious about fixing this country. We're not just going to kowtow. We're going to do what's right. Governor, I'm not trying to kiss up to you. I actually agree with your take on the polls. You really don't know <laughs> until the voters get to the, to the box there and they yeah. cast their ballots. They've been largely off uh, for the last several election sure. cycles here. Especially but, in a caucus. I mean, I think yes. that, you know, if we, if we were polling, you know, certain like, you know, general election polling, not that that's been great, but, but these caucuses are difficult. Usually in Iowa, 60% of the people that participate are first-time caucus goers. So just identifying who that's going to be for the purpose of polling is difficult. Um, so I, I think the best way to do it is to just line up people to support you. You know who you've got, and you turn them out. And we're doing a great job with that. Cool.